Uh, hey everyone, it's Troy Jackson with uh, this week's weekly update. This week I want to start by talking about something that happened in Texas. A uh, politically motivated judge uh, struck down the use of a uh, safe and effective drug called Mifepristone. Now this is something that the FDA has for decades actually approved, so going through the rigorous process. It's the most common form of abortion in the United States. So this is an attack on your reproductive freedoms. This is not something that judges or politicians should be involved in. This is something that you and your health care provider should be able to continue to make those decisions. In Maine, this drug is still available. It is something that can be part of your health care choices. We believe that Maine women and Maine people and Maine families know what's best for them. And, and all this is is politics that's actually getting in the way of women's reproductive health care rights and, and their conversations with their doctors. Now that's something that we've been fighting, pushing back on here in Maine and are going to continue to push back on because it's just not fair that uh, people that uh, you know, have had uh, care in the past are taking that away basically just on politics. Not only have Mainers spoken clearly on this, but the American people time and time again at the ballot box has spoken clear about reproductive justice and abortion access. So this week we had uh, more work on child care. Uh, you know, this week I actually presented LD 1287, which was a bill to give child care providers an appeal process. Uh, you know, certainly want to make sure that anyone that's in charge of children are doing everything they can to make sure that they're safe, uh, you know, quality places uh, for you to bring your children. But sometimes when the department actually uh, comes in and, and, you know, makes a decision that affects those child care providers, um, maybe that might have been made in haste or, or there may have been some uh, discrepancy in, in what uh, the evidence was, but, but the, the point is, is there's no place for that child care provider to actually turn uh, to appeal. Imagine everything you worked for, all the time spent away from your family, and it could all be taken away, away from you without ever being given an opportunity to explain your side to a fair body. And that's why uh, this bill is really important. You know, I've heard from child care providers across Rusa County, from one end to the other, uh, that have had issues and, and you know, we just would like to have a place where they can actually make their case. Clearly, if, uh, if it doesn't uh, have merit, that's one thing, but I think that there's been enough uh, times that I've heard stories that uh, you know, certainly felt like uh, there should be uh, an opportunity for people to appeal that case. In 2020, I was cited for um, a child coughing while leaving our gymnasium. I was given this citation not at that moment, but later on in the week. Um, after the licensing professionals had left my facility and I did not have an opportunity to give my input or explain that this child who was coughing has asthma and had just gotten done exercising in our gross motor room. So this week I also went to the Children's Caucus, uh, which is a bipartisan group uh, chaired by my good friends, uh, Representative Rebecca Millant and uh, Senator Rick Bennett. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really great legislators on there uh, that bring in people, bring in providers, bring in people that are expert specialists and talk about uh, these bills. We stay within a percentage of what families can afford. So we can't just charge more. We can't just raise our rates. We can't just cut programming. I can't take another side job. There's no way for us to make more money. Uh, I went in and talked about uh, the big uh, child care bill that I have uh, with this group uh, to actually double the stipends per month for child care workers to $400 a month. Uh, currently we have a stipend system that uh, the governor's proposed to extend for $200. That's great, uh, but it's not enough. Uh, you know, still too many people are struggling to keep up, um, you know, with uh, the low wages that are unfortunately paid in child care. Scholarships will be given to uh, child care workers uh, for their kids to actually have, uh, you know, child care. I mean, clearly if they're in the industry and, and you know, we want to keep them there. Uh, if they have children of their own, it, it makes it really hard, challenging financially. Uh, we give more money into Head Start uh, so that the Head Start program is, uh, you know, more effective and able to stay uh, uh, working and compatible for people. I mean, I, I certainly believe strongly in the Head Start program. Uh, it's a big bill, has a lot in it, and, and certainly uh, at this point we're getting a lot of support for it. I also want to thank the Right from the Start Coalition that uh, actually worked uh, so hard on this bill and putting it all together. And we're really hoping that um, you know, we can get this across the line 
uh, because it is a priority. It's something we have to do. I keep talking about this. That, you know, it's just too important and we're in too big of a crisis right now to not do something. Uh, I think this is a piece. Both of these bills are a piece, but there's other people here uh, that are proposing things that are a piece of the child care uh, crisis that we're in, and, and, and I feel very passionately about it. So another thing that happened this week that uh, probably is definitely not as important, but it certainly is something that I appreciated um, in the Senate Secretary's office, Jen Clark uh, came through with something I'd been asking her for for a while now. Uh, here at the Maine Legislature, you know, we have uh, a lot of things that we're able to give to uh, visitors that come, pins that re recognize, you know, our place in uh, uh, Maine is uh, somewhere that, you know, where it's important to lobster industry, uh, the potato industry, you know, farmers with apples. Uh, we got all kinds of different pins for things like that, but Jen uh, actually worked with me to design a pin that actually came out that has a truck on it uh, with a load of lumber. Actually has main logging on the side of the truck and something that, uh, you know, I mean, it's a small thing, but something that's important to me, uh, representing the logging industry and, and certainly being a former logger and my son being one. Uh, so that's something that now uh, I can give out to kids that uh, actually stop in here page or just come in to you know see what the Senate's uh, doing. Um, it's a nice little thing for me as I'm rounding out uh, my time here in the Maine Senate. And with that, uh, you know, this is the end of this week's weekly update. I certainly look forward to talking to you next week. Uh, take care and be well out there.